is Rura Society of North India, Unit 18, Rura Society of Peninsula India. And these three units are very simple and they are very they are just informative. Nothing to be analytical or nothing to be um, interpretive. Not, no, nothing, nothing sort of interpretive, interpretive as we had previous uh, block, uh, block uh, four, early uh, medieval society and uh, social proliferation of uh, caste that we had already discussed yesterday. And uh, today's unit, uh, today's units are block is not so analytical or interpretative, very informative. So whatever um, problem or uh, doubts you have while you are going through your uh, study materials concerning these three units, you may put forth your question. You may ask me. Yes. Sir? Yes, Sardanjali. Tell me, me your, uh, Sir, my doubt. Uh, sir, explain me about a punch and or a punch mukaddam. Punch mukaddam. Punch yeah, mukaddam. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Punch mukaddam. That point. Um, generally, this concept of Pancha is nothing, but it is associated with our uh, village panchayat or uh, village council. For example, uh, we have got uh, so many references to this Pancha Mukadam. Actually, Panch is a term and Mukadam is another term. Panch is a term signifying, signifying, signifying the village oligarchy. Oligarchy means village seniors or uh, these uh, senior members of the village councils, uh, they are called generally panch. Uh, the, from this word panch, we have this panchayat, uh, the term is called panchayat. And we got this uh, Parsi term or Arabic term like mukaddam. That also signifies the same thing, this village oligarchy, for um, senior members, um, experienced members of the village. And that is what we call it panch mukaddam. Uh, this is uh, um, to be very precise and uh, uh, to give you more references, I may tell you and that uh, the documents uh, regarding this Panch Mukadam, which we get uh, from Brindaban, Brindaban documents uh, of 16th century onwards, give a great deal of uh, information regarding this Panch Mukadam, uh, functioning of the village community, uh, Panch Mukadam and functioning of the village community. Uh, during this medieval period. Uh, documents are bilingual, as I told you, they are in Persian language as well as Braj language. Braj language, which are, which is generally, um, is to, till now also it is prevalent in and, and around this Mathura, Brindavan, Agra area of Uttar Pradesh. This we call also Braj Bhumi and the land of the Krishna. So Braj language, they mainly deal with the sale of village lands. It is Persian version village oligarchy. As I told, village oligarchy, it means a group of people controlling the affairs of the village and they are called Panch. In British language, in Indian language, it has been mentioned as Panch, while they are also referred to as Mukaddam in Persian language. So this is about the Panch Mukaddam, which we can say they are the village oligarchies or village council, have senior members of the village council who look after different aspect of the village, uh, issues of the village, like uh, sale and purchase of the land. Also, there were also some sort of um, classes or controversy relating to lands and other issues. So these are the, this is the um, meaning of Panch Mukadam. Yes. Okay, sir. Next. Uh, anybody else uh, need any question? Uh, Sir Mila. Sir, Sir importance of the village community. Importance of the village community. Yes, sir. Uh, 
role and function of the village community, importance of the village community. Um, village community of which? Which uh, North India or uh, medieval um, North India or South India? Generally, it is North India. Uh, sir, you need 16. Oh, yes, yes, I know you need 16. It is North India, medi medieval period, North India. Then uh, actually, it should be the uh, what is a village community? Generally, village is considered, is, uh, generally, a village is called in the name in the in the in the term of uh, the term of village is gown this like that and who resides in the village generally the agriculturalist artisan and craftsman yes or no yes the residents of the village majorities are of cultivators and uh, besides cultivators there are artisan and craftsmen in some of the Indian literature, Puranic literature, and also in other literature of India, it is village has been described as a land which is surrounded by land, surrounded by cultivable land, not only land, cultivable land. And in between this cultivable land, there is Bastu or the residential plots, residential sector where people reside. So when we are talking about the cultivable land surrounding the village, it means the village is a place where the most important activity is centered around cultivation. And beside cultivation, there are certain occupation, artisan and craftsmen are there who were there to help the cultivator to get their desired implements for cultivation. And in this way, we see that uh, the, the com village importance of the village community is to produce the surplus uh, food products, food, uh, food uh, items, so that it can be utilized for feeding the people living in the urban areas and doing the things for the help of cultivation, for the growth of cultivation, and the, for the security and safety of the people in that region. So we can, in that way, we can say, that village folks uh, generally there were four types of village folk. There are four types of village uh, residents. We can say that that uh, the produce sharing pigeons or share cropper. All pigeons are not having their land. You may get in the um, 18th, 18th or 17th unit, 17th, 18th, and this like a uh, food cost and. Um, share proper, all these things you will get. And here I'm going to narrate them that there are different types of people. And number one is that and there are pigeons who are share cropper. We can say they are Korsako or Kusako. Share cropper means those who plow the lands of the people, those who cultivate the lands of other people for a share. They, they, they are not having the a proprietary right of the land, uh, so they um, cultivate for others, and they get a share out of the crop they produce. They are they are they are called share cropper. Then there are second types of people who are called plow shares and field laborers. Plow shares means those who come only plower and uh, plow and shares uh, and um, cultivate the field as laborer. They are not also um, um, sharecropper. They don't cultivate it for themselves. They cultivate for others. They just get some wages for that. And then we can, they are generally called Halabakara and Kinasa. And generally in our Uriya language, they are called Halua in that way. And uh, Kinasa is a term we get from North Indian um, Term, terminology North Indian context, Kinasa and Halavakara, and even Korsaka, they are also known as Korsaka. Then, the, besides that, there are another um, section of the people that reside in the village, and they are called free pigeons. Free pigeons means they are the, the um, pigeons with land and they don't have, owe anything to anybody, they are not uh, having any debt on their head. 
so they are free pigeons and they can go anywhere by selling out their own land and they can do anything at their mercy will for cultivation and then there are another group of uh, pigeons they were village artisans clobbler as i told you all are not pigeons there are certain um, people who are also associated with pigeonry work and they are they are they are they are, they are in the village to help and serve the villagers in their day to day work as well day to day life and they are they are generally artisans and craftsmen village artisan craftsmen and uh, they are cobbler rope makers and uh, village watchmen chokidar jahan ko hum ko che cobbler jahan ko hum ko che mochi रोप मेकर्स जे कि दौड़ी इत्यादि बाउंस कठाड़ी बाउंस विभिन्न झुड़ी प्रोड़ी प्रस्तुत करम्बो वर्कर्स दे आर अल्सो सम्रॉट अफ वर्क क्राफ्ट वर्क और आर्टिशन दे लिव इन भिलेज टू हेल्प अदर्स सो इन दिस वे वी सी दैट भिलेज कम्युनिटी इज डिडेड एंड दे कंट्रीब्यूट फॉर टूअर्ड्स दि प्रोडक्शन इश्यूज एंड दैट हेल्प to produce surplus and which is in terms consumed by the people living in far off areas and um, responsible for the safety security and all the development of the region and that is the importance of the village community and village people okay sir mila okay sir mm. next हेलो सर सर बीडी चट्टोपाध्याय हैज डिफाइंड ए विलेज कंपोज्ड थ्री कंपोनेंट्स वास्तु क्षेत्र गोचर गोचर मीन गोचर मीन से दोज लैंड अनकल्टिवेबल अनकल्टिवेटेड लैंड व्हिच आर जनरली आउटसाइड द विलेज फॉर द सेक ऑफ द ग्रेजिंग ऑफ द काउस सब गाँव में देखी थी गाँव बाहर गोरु जो पड़िया चोर थे कहते गोचर एंड दिज लैंड आर दि गवर्नमेंट लैंड दैट लैंड इज एक्चुअली ओनरशिप ऑफ दैट लैंड बिलंगस टू गवर्नमेंट सरकार बट दैट इज कल्ड गोचर अफ दि भिलेज भिलेजेस दे पे टैक्सेस एंड रेवेन्यूज फर दि गोचर एड वेल एज पथकर फर दि रोड दे पे टैक्सेस फर एंजयिंग दैट लैंड और यूटिलइिंग लैंड फर दैर से um collectively entire village has right over the land but th that land does not belong to the village that land belong to the um, some government that is called gochar gochar it means go jo guru mane jo di charanti ho kon yes sir yes given the three types of vastu residential land khetra cultivable land and gochar pasture land besides gochar there are also land gochar is not only a single patch of land or a single kind of land gochar is also associated with some barren land or some forest land uh, adjoining lying adjoining to the village which the villagers use to collect dry sticks dry wood for their uh, fire fire i mean firewood for um, Fire for cooking food, etc. So they are also they also come under the gochar land, and there um, there there are generally uh, land uh, belonging to forest. Yes. Beside this threefold uh, division, which has been advocated by B. T. Chattopadhyay in his uh, early medieval uh, in his book Early Medieval Society. Uh, there are also other uh, other uh, doctor sahu you are present in the class i think uh, can you help me because uh, light has gone away from my home and uh, i know i i want to share this um, study material on the screen hello doctor sahu are you in the class Yes, yes, yes. Uh, are you free to share this study material uh, on the screen so that? No, no. Actually, you know, now there is no current. 
Oh, I, I, I'm also I'm also having same problem. Therefore, I have to <laughs> just oh, light that. No current. Let the current come. Uh, I'll say. Okay. Current do do. Because seven te, uh, seven we have again one more class is there. So let me see from the. Uh, oh. Mobile is very small. Having a small screen. Please, man, go tell me. Good. Ah, man, go tell me. Yes, um, Sharmila, I'm giving you reference to more, um, time more, more uh, information. A reference to more information concerning the types of land. There was there is there is a document called uh, Taksim document uh, preserved in the State Archives of Rajasthan Bikaner, uh, which gives idea that the village of Eastern Rajasthan comprised of uh, generally seven uh, eight types of land. Uh, the Taksim documents. Uh, is consisted of information which gives eight types of land in uh, Rajasthan area, generally in eastern Rajasthan area, and they are Basti area under habitation. Basti means area under uh, habitation. Raho, Raho means rasta. Raha, jago ami track Basti koi pariya, ba ami to koi pariya. Gramo patho. Then uh, Margo rocky land, Magro Magro not Margo Magro rocky land. Then Pahad hill. Mm. Then the Rajasthan area is a hill base there. So hill come the village road component is also some nature. Then Nola, Nadi, and uh, Talab. Those who are stream, river, or pond. So we village road is a then seed land under special revenue arrangement. And uh, eighth is jungle. Seventh is jungle forest land. I, I told you that Gochari is not only uh, isolated phenomena or isolated uh, in the, um, entity of a piece of land. But they, it is all sometimes also associated with jungle land, forest, and these forests are also collectively used by a village uh, for the sake of um, uh, their own uh, necessity. And then the last is eighth is cultivable land. So there are also besides the BD Chattopadhyay's classification of three types of lands, there are also some other types of lands which we get from different uh, sources and we see as many as eight kinds of land existing in villages so this is your answer i think uh, you could understand it now coming to uh, somebody has asked me before uh, sarmila importance of village community uh, somebody has asked me importance of village community yes yes sir here I will give you some reference. Uh, who had asked me? Susri. Uh, who had asked me? Anyway, anybody who, who might have asked, uh, you may also note it down. You see, this is in your page number 11, uh, block number 5, page number 11. Here it is a very good reference. Uh, so far, the importance of the village community is concerned. The village community was a strong pillar of the rural society. Rural society, Ka Sabdata. Gan samas pani village society ba gram grammar or jo community thela village sampradaya gramo sampradaya gude thela strong bhot bhot shakti sali stamboi sabre kamo kor thola wherever institutional or social system in a village was involving the village population in some form of uh, some form of cooperation or dependence village community exist jodi kono si prakar 
आवश्यकता होता कौन भिलेज ग्रुप ररकार पड़ता डिपेडेन्स निर्भरता कौन सी प्रकार आवश्यकता थी साहयता भिलेज कम्युनिटी से प्रेजेन्ट थी एंड इट इज वन अफ दि वी कैन से दैट इट कम्स अंडर दि इम्पोर्टास् जो आगुरी कहली दैट इज अबाउट दि कंपोजिशन अफ दि भिलेज कम्युनिटी सो फार दि इम्पोर्टास् इज कनसर्ण वी कैन अल्सो रईट दिस पर्सन इलेवेन इलेवेन पेज नंबर इलेवेन यू कैन यू कैन हाव दिस टू पाराग्राफ पाराग्राफ सेकेंड पाराग्राफ थर्ड पाराग्राफ यू कैन टेक इट ओके and for your reference you go through these two paragraphs i gave you the page number uh, reference to page number and i gave you two um, sentences for uh, year marking you can have uh, for yourself okay 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 sir hmm. next 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 question उ it is uh, you come to page number um, sir page number uh, 22 ask you dr sao uh, please come to page number 140 uh, 150 52 52 152 Page 22, page 22. And I, you are right. Your page is 22, and Dr. Sir is sharing screen with study materials. So I am asking him to come to page uh, number 122. Yes, sir. Uh, in a uh, this is block one, page 22, block one. We 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 shall go to play um, block five, page twenty two. In our uh, I mean uh, this uh, PDF file, it has been there. It is there in page one hundred fifty two. It is block two. I need block five. Unit seventeen, correct. Unit seventeen. Unit seventeen. Oh, thank you. That's twenty-two. presentation of travel society yeah. okay thank you dr sal thank you um, actually uh, before going to tell you about this uh, process of presentation of travel society i must tell you that uh, main occupation of the travel society centers around pastoralism pastoralism means they were having some sort of their own um, domesticated uh, domesticated uh, animals and uh, they were just leading the life of a nomad pastoralism is just uh, like a nomad they were moving from one place to another place in search of uh, pasture now what happened in eastern india and in uh, to some extent in south india uh, this uh, pigmentation of tribal people uh, happened a bit too early around 7th 8th century this pigmentation process has already began in 7 in eastern and in southern india and also to some extent in western india but in northeastern india it was still under the process and uh, here in your in your um, block number 5 here they have given you know, this um, 
presentation uh, process of presentation of the tribal society uh, belonging to this uh, 15th 16th century ad uh, 15th 16th century ad where jat tribe jat tribe was gradually moving towards uh, this uh, sedentary occupation of agriculture sedentary occupation of agriculture means not moving but staying um, staying at a place and not moving without any sort of mobility staying at a place and doing um, some productive work like ag agriculture or cultivation that is called um, sedentary uh, occupation of agriculture or cultivation or anything like uh, um, trade anything so but it was mainly their pastoralism which marked their job or occupation. And it has been mentioned here clearly, dominant form of subsistence, sustenance among the tribal community was pastoralizing. Nonetheless, tribes response to situation was different as per their ecological surrounding and situation. There was subtle movement of the tribal towards sedentarization, what I called, what I told just now, sedentarization. Sedentarization means not moving any, anywhere, but doing uh, some work at a particular fixed point of place and uh, earning their sustenance. And that was subtle moment of travel towards sedentarization. The process of sedentarization of the pastoralist continued uh, unabated throughout the medieval period. That is the thing that, uh, that is the process where we see in the medieval period, the tribal population, different uh, tribal population of the different tribe, they were gradually moving from this uh, you know, pastoralism to sedentary occupation and that is the process which co is called um, some presentation of uh, tribal society and when we are talking about this uh, sedentary occupation uh, sedentarization it means sedentary occupation involving agriculture involving agriculture that is what we see that tribals were um, converting themselves from a pastoral people to a people having agriculture as their main occupation. You will see that when sang in your study material, you may go through as I'm um, just reading out. When sang mentioned them, when sang mentioned them. Um, In, in case in the case of Jat tribe, this process is clearly evident. I had just I had just told you that uh, the case study of Jat tribe has been taken here. In case of the Jat tribes, this uh, process is clearly evident. Which process? This presentation of tribal society into um, tribal society in the medieval period. Um, this Jat tribe moved towards. Their um, towards uh, moved northwards uh, by abandon, abandoning their pastoralism and opted sedentary agriculture. When Sang in 4, 647 mentioned them as cattle herder. When Sang Sara Bharata Varsar Brahman Kortile, Tanku Gochorali by Guru Rokutua, Lokohi Sabre, Tanku Bonana Korichanti. Similarly, another Arabic work is of a ninth century. Ninth century. And its translation was um, published in 1216 AD. Uh, that is Chacha Nama. Um, Chacha Nama also referred to uh, this Jat community as pastoralist, and they were also working as soldiers for different kings, different states, and also boatmen. Alboruni also gives them the title of cattle owner, and they were placed by Alboruni as low class sudra. But gradually, by 16th century, we see they were living in these areas of Punjab and uh, Haryana. And uh, Babur, when he came in the 16th century in India, the Babur mentioned them that uh, they were a type of vigorous pigeons. It means Krusaka both Kamukurtva, Kotina Parishami, Kosaka, Krusaka. And um, uh, in the 7th century, we see Dabistani Majahib uh, records this jad community is the lowest caste of the boisture there you see uh, this um, difference alveruni 
who gave alvaruni gave them this uh, uh, place of lowest caste by sudra lowest caste sudra and they were having cattle as they as their work was to cut herding the cattle but uh, now you see in the 7th century uh, we get that uh, alvaruni is uh, 11th century 1030 ad and 17th century it means after 16 600 years they had upgraded their status from low class sudra to uh, low class vaishya so in this way we can understand how this pigmentation of tribal society going on yes next question okay who had asked me this question Yes, sir. Body will not report with that. Ah, now if you are not asking question then i am asking you have you gone through this uh, rural society in deccan what is its composition rural society in deccan what is its composition it's a very interesting thing that i am going to discuss uh, with uh, you uh, some points some important points of the rural society of the deccan Uh, some important point just i am going to discuss you as you are not asking me questions i am giving uh, it uh, from my one that um, generally i have already told you uh, for uh, medieval deccan and the name of the village was uh, we have got, we have got from different uh, sources arabic sources persian sources as well as uh, indian sources indigenous sources of india and um, we come that uh, for deccan villages deccan we may call deccan uh, the area um, northern karnataka maharashtra and southern gujarat this area can be called as deccan and also some part of this uh, peninsular india um, having this uh, nagpur and uh, this hyderabad region also can be considered as deccan area so these are generally called uh, western deccan and eastern deccan in eastern deccan we have uh, this uh, odisha um, this uh, sambalpur and uh, Um, all these regions, Western Odisha and Andhra Pradesh region, Western Andhra Pradesh region. These are Eastern Deccan. Generally, here we are concerned with Western Deccan and um, Peninsular India, and that uh, in this area, generally in medieval area age, Deccan was uh, villages were known in the name of Gaon, Moja, and there, Moja or Moje. This is also. Um, very much prevalent in uh, in odisha moja this word for us had its genesis in arabic or persian language moja and uh, gaon and there uh, a bigger village uh, with a marketplace is was called kasba um, or kasbe then uh, the land which was having the land which was having uh, black so black soil and black soil land it was called kali the cultivable land in maharashtra and in central india you will find the land is uh, very much black it is called black cotton soil so it, this land was known in the name of kali and kali was divided into blocks called thal thal means thal means the which the sanskrit word it has been derived from the sanskrit word sthala sthala means jaga basthana or land and then each sthal or each sthal was named after its original proprietor sthal consisted of fields which is called set or khet the set s h e t set or set and uh, it this set has been uh, uh, derived from the word sanskrit word khet और क्षेत्र जहाँ को आम कही पार के एस एच टी आर ए क्षेत्र एंड 
the Arabic version of this khetra is Jamin. The inhabited, inhabited area, generally inhabited area, as somebody had told, uh, we have discussed now, inhabited area in the village is called in the name of Bastu. And uh, here in the Deccan area, it was called Pandhari. Pandhari is generally an area which people used to live. And this is not black soil, but it is white soil or brownish soil. And it is not fit for cultivation. And Pandhari was also divided into different uh, blocks, different uh, sites. And they were uh, divided into house sites. Ghorsthana or Ghartikana, each of which was owned by the Patil. Patil was the headman of the village. And similarly, uh, other village officers, peasants and village servants and artisans were also living in this Ghartan or village um, Bastu, which is known in the name of um, Pandhari. When a family left the village or migrate to another, migrate to another village or to any township and leave behind their homestead land, uh, homestead and cultivable land behind it. And this land was called Gatkal, uh, Gatkul. Gatkul means, Kula means family, Gat means Jaitiva, Pali Jaitiva family, Gatkul. Gat means gone and Kul means a lineage or a family. And the house site and the house left behind was called Gatkul, Gharthana, and Gatkul Vada. Vada is generally a Maharashtrian word which generally indicate to a homestead land having a fixed boundary. Around the cultivable area were meadows. Meadows, exactly, uh, Quran or meadows. That is what we said, Gochoro, meadows. It was meant for common village use and was called people's meadows. Um, in Maharashtra, it has been mentioned as Lukacha Quran. Uh, the rural society of the Deccan consisted of five groups primarily. Only five groups are there. Number one, large landholders who held administrative position in the village. They were primarily the smokes and the spandes. Number two, village officers such as Herman or Patil and uh, Mukaddam, accountant and Kulkarni and so on. Then third is proprietary pigeons called Mirasdar or Talukdar and Talvaki, Talvaik. Then temporary pigeons called Uparis. Then uh, there are another types of people who are living in the village, village servants and artisan. They were called Baluddar. So this is what about the uh, brief discussion I gave you rural society in the Deccan. And you, if you read, you will get a uh, um, lot many, a lot more information, and you can uh, know more things. And if you can understand, you can ask me because I think in this uh, block there is nothing more to understand. You can understand it yourself uh, if you read it properly. Yes. Okay. Then uh, then we should come to. What was the social structure of the Deccan village? We are talk talking about the components of the Deccan village, a composition of the Deccan village. Then we shall come to social components of the Deccan village. Um, what was the social structure of Deccan village? Now you see, I am raising um, this uh, issues subject myself, and I am also reading it out for yourself. Um, should you should also participate as I am raising some topic and I am also describing them. I am trying to illustrate and I am trying to explain. You should also raise some topic from your own so that we can have a combined discussion. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, sir, uh, 35 pages re, land and social hierarchy in the rural society. Sir, do you know what I'm I'm here to explain. Um, page number 35, which 35. block? 
मीरा सिंह दिस डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ एग्रीकल्चरलिस्ट हो लिविंग इन दी डॉक्टर साहू प्लीज गिव इट इन ए ब्रॉडर वे आई मीन द फ्रंट साइज शुड बी इनक्रीज Hundred twenty-five. Okay, thank you. Okay, now see, it is it is their uh, land uh, and social hierarchy in the rural society. And you see, as I have already told you, I have already discussed. There are certain um, um, social hierarchy. I have discussed. All were not um, having land property. There were some some people who were having land. Who were having their land under their own proprietorship, proprietary right, and kichhi uh, lokon ko pakhare jami thila se maine kora malikana sotore kichhi lokon ko pakhare jami na thila se maine onne lokon ko jami re chasso kori ki chodu thule se maine ko sadhan to kwa jau thila wage laborer ja ko kwa thila also share share plow or plow sharer holo ba हल बिकर बोल कमे मेडियाल टाइम पखापाखी पंद्रह षोलश भर देखु गोटे नुआ प्रकार आसूची हायर आर की सोशियाल हायर आर की जोटा कि मानते नुआ कि देखुन केवल चेज हो जाऊँगी कतोटा टर्मिनोलोजी फर एक्जामपल आम देखु लैंड हायर आर की मीराशी टेन मीराशी क्या क्या जाए जन जनरली ए लैंड व्हिच हैज बीन व्हिच हैज बीन ट्रांसफर्ड टू ए पर्सन ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ हेरिडिटरी और वी कैन से मिरासी मीन पेट्रीमोनी हेरिडिटरी प्रॉपर्टी एंड दैट हैज बीन ट्रांसफर्ड टू द सन फ्रॉम हिज फादर और ग्रैंडसन फ्रॉम द ग्रैंडफादर एंड दैट इज जनरली ए मिरासी दैट इज द लैंड व्हिच इज कॉल्ड मिरासी लैंड पैतृक संपत्ति प्रथम राशि गाँव रही गाँव रमी पर अधिकार सब्यस्त कर समय मालिकाना सत्व को जमी सब आसीदार एंड सेकेंड आम पाच मिराजदार पर प्लीज टिके नेक्स्ट पॉइंट को जीवा नंबर टू उपरी टेनवर उपरी एंड इन दिस अंडर दिस कैटेगरी There are pigeons who are not actually permanent resident of a village. They are generally uh, temporary resident. Temporary resident, they usually the what happens? They usually migrate from their native village under some emergency, under some uh, bad times like famines and uh, different calamities by suffer uh, under the suffering. They come from their own native village and settle in the. Um, in a different village, they are called upari, and uh, many of them they don't have lands. Uh, as they don't have lands in the village, they are the temporary settlement. The what they do? 
they work in the fields of Mirasdar. Many of them were tenants on the Mirasi and Inam lands. They are the tenants. Praja is our Mirasi land. And Upari tenure was a temporary tenure. It is permanent. No, Ajijaku or Kaich Kalimataku, Barkar de Jay Paribo. In this way, we see there are two types, mainly two types. And in the 17th century, the number of Upari ten pigeons was small. However, in the 18th century, their population increased. 17th century, Upari tenure. Upari pigeons managara population comtila kinto eighteenth century Veluku Tankor Sankha Bodhi Jaitala eighty se Kochi Karankon. This was because of the conscious policy of agrarian expansion under Peswas in Maharashtra for expanding cultivation, pigeons were needed. Therefore, several Upuri pigeons were mobilized from other villages. Jetu agriculture expansion Maratha Managodinore Arambe Jaitala Peswa Manetime Ute Daito. And one by a camel, set him a age of Upuri pigeons man who's a man on Nano Garuaniki, Jungare, both land or Chibo, Jamia, she says of Garas and Zulu Next place, please. Next place, please. Next place, please. Dr. Sau. Then the third is state land. I have already told you. No, 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 we are going to too far. Uh, I want the next phase, uh, point number three. Ah, I, you see, yeah, here, 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 bus, bus, okay. Yes. Now there it was uh, another land was state land. It was called Sarkachi Seri, Seri Chenset, Kheth were scattered all over the villages in the Deccan. And uh, I have told you that uh, this sort of land um, under this category, we have this forest land and also the land belonging to uh, the forest of the village community, which is called Gochara. Actually, it is it belongs to Go village community but it have, villagers don't have proprietary right over this land they just uh, enjoy it for the sake of their need for the sake of their requirement they don't have any then we have number four types of four next type of land is tinam land tenure inam is an arabic word and it uh, ke bitru pa jeje ame majugani pariye ki can we have a central view of this page the right hand side of the page is being uh, in visual on the screen uh, yes yes inam which is called also a gift this was not a service tenure but a reward for the service rendered to the village like religious duty administrative duty duties and work for social welfare an inam was created by an arrangement called inam patra or karar between the state and the individual. So these are the inam land and the, who are the people enjoying this inam land? Um, generally, these inam lands were held by the people on hereditary basis and village officials like Desmuk, Despande, Patil, Kulkani, village watchman, village astrologer and several other men who were responsible as well as um, uh, as well as some higher category uh, residents of the village they were uh, enjoying this inam land they were having this inam land as the inam or as gift patil management village had been the desmuk despande all these men who were superior villagers they were having this inam land we shall go to the next point uh, number 5 Number five. Then there was another land, Watan Tenure. Watan Tenure um, is the um, that land 
which village officials like Deshmukh, Despande, Patils, Balutadar, Balutadar, that is, I have told you, the servants of the village, those who serve the village and Mahar communities uh, held large miras and inam lands and I were entitled to certain rights and privileges called Halka Pamja. They were received certain amounts of produce from the peasants and service of the village artisans. All these privileges along with their respective administrative position, except probably in the case of Mahas, were called Vatan. So this is Vatan tenure, which the um, village officers, different village officers and the village servants, they get certain amounts of privileges, certain amounts of uh, produce from others, and that is called Vatan tenure. By Koro, by Bibino Procaro, a revenue by Rajoso, Jumane, Kudiajo, Eman Kudiajo, Rabangeta, Sarkar and Kodara, Onomoditatilla. Next, next, next point, please. Then Mokasa, Mokasa, Jagir, Sarjam, tenure. These were essentially military tenures, though they were in principle temporary. In course of time, they became hereditary. Civil functions were often attached to this tenure. These military tenures were common in 17th century in the Sultan of Adil Sahis of Bijapur in the North Karnataka region. They were powerful members of Adil Sahih administration and held offices of Wajir, Amir, and Diwan. So in this way, we can say that this tenure, Mokasa or Jagir, Sarjam tenure are the are the privileges granted to some military officers. I have already told you yesterday, I mean in my last class, that in, from the Gupta period onward, military officers or the Sena Naikas, they were also getting uh, villages and lands in lieu of their in lieu of their services as their uh, salary or as their uh, remuneration. So in 17th century, 18th century also, we are seeing that in the Karnataka, in the Bijapur area, this sort of things uh, continued. And this is in another way, in another nam. It was Agrahar village, or it was some sort of um, um, Dano, some sort of Dano, land grants. Here it is called Jagir, in Persian language, Jagir. And this Jagir was given to military officers in lieu of their services to the state. Next, please. Hmm. So these were the, these were the six types of land, um, land uh, and uh, had land, landed hierarchy prevalent in Deccan area. Um, yes, oh. yeah, keep it there. I shall discuss. Uh, yes, who had asked me this question, sir? Santoshini, Santoshini, uh, are you there? It showed that you had left the yes, sir. It was showing that no, you sir. had left. Oh, you are there. Okay. Now, yes, sir, I'm here. Uh, you are there. Okay. Think, very good. Um, so this, these are the six types of hierarchy, landed hierarchy. And uh, this landed hierarchy were also in accordance with the social hierarchy prevalent in the village, present in the village community, among the village community. I think uh, if you read them again, you can understand it quite well. Yes, sir. Okay. Hmm. Okay, sir. So, and this is about this um, your village social and the landed hierarchy of the village. Uh, next, I was just I had just raised another um, topics for discussion. Social structure in South in Deccan village. Social structure, it is one of the most important thing. Social structure, as you have asked me, this um, social hierarchy 
and if you understand the social structure then you can also understand the social hierarchy prevalent in the deccan villages so what was the social structure of deccan village the medieval chola under the raja raja and his successor developed a highly organized administrative structure with central control and autonomous village assemblies the system of government um, i think uh, this uh, we shall go discuss tomorrow this this is block 6 so uh, unit 9 is not the topic of discussion for today's session tomorrow we shall take up this clans and confederacies in uh, western india tomorrow in tomorrow session we shall discuss uh, so i don't need uh, this person unit 9 uh, you may bring uh, unit 18 unit 18 unit 18 yes pass this is this is this is the, here here uh, please keep it here now uh, we see that the rural society had a stratified and complex structure the social relation based on caste comprised of relation between brahmanas non brahmanas and other menial caste generally the landed classes belong to the upper caste i think these things that has been enumerated here in their study material and it is in unit 18 uh, it is not uh, uh, so much difficult to understand you can understand them very well it has been mentioned uh, what is the social structure in the rural society during medieval time now you can understand them just i am going to discuss about the social structure of the deccan village deccan means south indian or um, this maharashtra karnataka and uh, tamil nadu region so you can understand them i have just try to put it in front of you so that you can understand a continuous uh, structural design of the society uh, in north india as well as in south india um, here in south india what we see this uh, medieval chola under raja raja and his successor developed a highly organized administrative structure with central control and autonomous village assemblies and you know this chola empire was the first empire chola rule was the first rule in india which has first established this panchayat raj system or the village council system um, very effectively there were village council but effectiveness was attached to this village council during the chola time and um, the system of government was a hereditary monarchy and the coronation of the king was an impressive ceremony the royal household had numerous servants of varied description for the purpose of administration the empire was divided into convenient areas such as balandu mandalam nadu etc land revenue was the mainstay of public finance and great care was undertaken to record land rights and revenue duties and during this time we see the crime treason were very less and king was dealing it himself and uh, there was a great uh, building activity during this time in south in deccan we see this temple of brihadasar was also built during this time of chola rule so in this way we see that there was a um, decent social structure coming up in the south india during the time as we are discussing of the medieval period then um, what were the function and powers of village community it was another important thing that we may also discuss what was the function and power of the village community and we had discussed the importance of the village community but function and powers of the village community we have not discussed and i hope you have read it and if you have any question on this you may ask me
Anupama. Are you going to ask me any question? No, sir. No. Anybody? Hello? Uh, hello? No, sir. No. no question. No. Okay, if you don't have any question, then anybody else? Now, so, okay, on the screen, the structure of rural society, we shall now discuss. This uh, rural society had a stratified complex and uh, stratified complex structure. As you see that uh, rural society is always not very plain. It is It is also in the rural India also, we see a stratified order. What do you mean by stratified structure? Stratified means a hierarchical structure. Hierarchical means the structure having different components at different levels. And this structure generally vertical in nature, vertical in character. It means at a higher level, somebody is there. Below him, the, below him, somebody is there, and next to him, somebody is there at the bottom. So, in this way, a stratified structure is a hierarchical structure in a vertical manner. And rural society is also was also having such a structure. Uh, it was, of course, inhabited by agriculturalists, but there were also some servants, artisans, who were there as village servants village assistant to help the villager in their day-to-day -day life. In this way, we see there is a well-knit structural framework in the rural society. And we can discuss them here now as that um, social relationship, which was based on caste, comprised of relations between Brahmana, non-Brahmana, and other manual caste. Generally, the landed classes belong to the upper caste. However, there were several landed classes like Kunbis. Hey, these Kunbis were nobody, nobody that uh, they were the holder of this Mirasi land. I was just discussing before this Mirasi land. They were the Kunbis who were holder of this Mirasi land um, who did not have high caste status but were very powerful in the village. The peasants belong to the royal caste and the rural laborer who were landless belong to the manual caste. Such caste are called dominant, dominant caste, a concept allowed by the famous anthropologist M. N. Srivastava. So here, what we find that there were different castes different types of people in the village and their caste or their social structure, social position is determined by their holding of lands. And sometimes also those who caste were not so high caste but holding land, they were also powerful. They are also fit in the structural uh, framework of the village society. And in this way, we find the remark of uh, uh, famous anthropologist M. N. Sebastian, who say that a caste is a dominant caste is dominant when it is numerically the strongest in the village or local area. यार अर्थ है ना उटे कास्ट के तबले डोमिनेट ही परिवो जो दी न्यूमेरिकली संख्या को तबाह बरे यार ये सबूतो अधिका बा यार संख्या सबूतो अधिका उटे अंचलरे थी बो तले कास्ट का डोमिनेट ही परिवो. For example, in a Brahmin Sasan in a Brahmin village, as because the number, that's because the number of the Brahmins are large, numerous in a Brahmin sasan. Therefore, they are dominant in that sasan village. Similarly, in a um, village having this agriculturalist, only agriculturalist, chasa caste, so they were dominant. So therefore, M. N. Srivast Srinivasan he has given this idea that caste is a dominant when it is numerically the strongest in the village or local area and economic and politically exercises a preponderant influence and if a class is dominant in the area then economically and politically that it can also exercise its uh, influence 
So though this study, through this study, is based on a contemporary archaeological, uh, anthropological field analysis of the Okaligas, a dominant peasant caste in Rampur village of Karnataka. It is relevant for the medieval period too. Caste group like Redis, Kamas were not ritually high caste, but yielded power on the basis of superior land rights and the authority to collect taxes on behalf of the tax. Hence, in this manner, they are dominant caste. So when we studied the social structure of the village community, we must understand that the dominance of the caste or the superiority of the caste is not always based upon this uh, traditional caste system. Sometimes some lower caste also, they were instrumental in dominating that area because of their landed rights or the lands possessed by them. If they were numerous in uh, number and if they are, they are possessing high amount of land, then they were sub they were um, um, they are they are thought to be dominant in that area. So I think you understand the structure of the rural society. And if you read them, you will find uh, what I have discussed in the introduction, you will read them and you will find. I cannot just give a detailed analysis of them, whatever it's written in the material. So you read them, you can you can find uh, this entire thing. Okay. Now, Dr. Sau, are you present? Or you have gone to some other class? Hello, Dr. Sau, are you present? मैंने Okay, uh, I, I request all of you, uh, my dear learners, uh, please uh, you read yourself. Okay, um, you read yourself uh, the next uh, 17 and 18 units. Five minutes uh, leisure, I'm taking five minutes last session, I'm taking five minutes off. Uh, you just uh, make up your mind what sort of question, what sort of doubt you have encountered. You can ask me within these five minutes, 10 minutes. You can also put it in a, on a piece of paper. We shall come back again after five minutes. Thank you. I'm coming back.
Okay, I'm back. Okay, I'm back. Hmm. Okay. And this, uh, um, I think we have already completed, uh, finished this uh, person which is on the screen. So we shall go to unit 18 again. Sir. Yes. Sir, I, had a, I have a question. I have uh, mentioned it in the chat box. Uh, you may have, please uh, repeat your question. Sir, who were Baluk Das? What kind Baluk. of status? they had in the society, what were their role in the society, how Alut Dars were different from Balut Dars? Balut Dar. Balut Dars were generally, traditionally, they are um, assigned with a um, um, term, this Balut Dar. They, they were generally uh, called servants of the village, village servants. Uh, village servants, as I have already told you, different uh, village servants like um, Artisans group, and uh, I'm telling you just now, just just a minute. Page number thirty-nine. Uh, okay, okay. Ah, uh, you see, village. Uh, it is been mentioned here. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Services and remuneration of the Baluddar. Uh, we shall go to 38 page, page number 38, please. Village servants, they come. You see here, the servants who were primarily artisans and formed an important section of the rural society in Deccan. They, it has been clearly mentioned, village servants were primarily artisans and formed an important section of this rural society in Deccan. They were called Balutedar, and their income, which was a share in the agricultural produce, was known as Balutas. The share which the servants they receive from their masters master who were the masters masters were generally the villagers landholders these high class landholders high class villagers who were the masters mm -hmm. they used to pay the the, um, the servants of the villagers who were generally artisans and these artisans are generally engaged in different works of uh, cobbling then uh, different uh, smith uh, uh, for example, um, blacksmiths, then this uh, making of pots. These were the people, artisan people, and this uh, also the service of this uh, Napita, that is uh, barber. They provide service, therefore, they are called generally village servants. And this Baluddha, they are called Baluddha because the share they receive from their master, the landholders, agriculturalists, as in, in lieu of their service, is called Balud. Therefore, they are called Baluddha. They were counterparts of the Kamins of North India. These village servants were called Kamins in North India. In North India context, um, these artisans, different artisans living in the village and providing service to villagers, they were called Kamins. And uh, here in Deccan in South India, they were called Balutadar. Are you sure? Uh, okay, clear? Yes, sir. 
sir uh, what about aluk das the another class of sir, village servants what about aluk das sir in page number 39 only the last para of composition topic Thirty-nine. Yeah. Another class it has mentioned, but they do not. But but would, they never enjoyed the status of Baluch Das. Yeah. The, the first uh, class. Yes. Okay. It's okay. Um, uh, clearly, it has been mentioned that these, uh, there were two kinds of Baluchas: Watanda and Mirasi Baluchas and Upari Baluchas. The nature of salu service of Watandar Baluta was hereditary fix. Generally, they enjoyed monopoly over their respective occupation, but the services of poor Upari Balutas was not. I have already told you that we are, when we are, remember when I was discussing about the landed stratigraphy, stratigraphy of different land and social structure, I had already told you there was Mirath Mirasdar, there was Upridar. And there was also Watandar. Watan is some, is some sort of privileges given to some people, uh, enjoyed by some people in the village as uh, as a right, as a um, gift from the uh, master or from the royal, uh, from the uh, rulers. And uh, they, they, that uh, that gift is generally enjoyed on the basis of hereditary, on the hereditary basis. Therefore, it is always fixed. And similarly. Upari dar jo upari baluta, those who are actually not uh, hereditary, those who are not actually permanent, they were temporary. These upari baluta dar were temporary. Therefore, their remuneration and their uh, um, uh, amounts that they used to receive was not fixed. Therefore, they don't get a fixed amount of revenue as compared to the Watandar Balutas. And as a result, we see there is a difference between Watandar or hereditary Balutas and those who are the Balutas who are doing the work on the basis of Upari. Upari means temporary. And therefore, they were employed on a temporary basis, either to support the village. Next phase. May I have next phase, please? Hmm. Existing Balutas or provisionally work in case a Watan Baluta migrated or left the village. Watan Balutas, those who have been given the work to do it on the hereditary basis and get their remuneration or had hereditary basis, if this Watandar, Watan Balutas, it migrates to another village, then some uh, temporary Balutadar, it, he used to take up the work of this Watandar, Watan Balutas, and therefore. This Upari Balutadar doesn't did not have a that monopoly, that type of opportunity or that type of privileges that Watan Balutadar was having. So there is a difference between Watan Balutadar and Upari Balutadar. Watan Balutadar is of a permanent nature, Upari Balutadar is of a temporary nature. Therefore, the privileges and the rights they enjoy was also different. While the previous one that is, Vartan Balutadar um, receives and gets their rights had on hereditary basis. Here, Upri Balutadar gets their right on temporary basis, and therefore, their rights and privileges, privileges are not the same. It is when you, if you read, if you clear read, you go on reading, you will find many things which are very much clarified in a, which has been enumerated in a very clarified way. You see the next chapter. A Watan Baluta could be sold, divided, or transferred by its holder. Sale of Watan among the same profession caste was common. Watan means Junta Taku Diajaichi, Gutaprakar, Gip Diaj by Gutapra, Rail Taku Diaichi, Taro Taku in Jukti Diaj said a sold Karaja Pertula. If there were only one family of a serving caste in a village, it would be treated as the servant of the entire village. And when there were several families of the same occupation caste, they served different village families. So that the Gote family, Watandar Balut family, Raila, Tale, say, Sabu, entire village go, Sabado, for example, Bagutia Gorabarico, Ebongare Pochas Goro, Tale, Pochas Goroku, say, Gutia Gorabarico family, Sabadebe, Gutia Gorab, Wasserman, 
पचास घर होती गाँ लोक वाशरमैन लोक से गोटे घर लोक से पचास जन सब सर्विस दब कि पांचटा वाशरमैन अच्छा पांचटा वाशरमैन पचास टाइम दस दस टा घर को सेवा देवे एवं से अनुसार से पाना पाइबे किंतु जो मैंने ऊपरी से किसी सेम फिक्स न थाए से मैंने पचासटा दे पारे दस टा दे पारे और दरकार पड़े समस्त दे पारे जदि कहीं न रे ऊपरी से कमटा ऊपरी बालुथुदार से कमटा कर सो ये पूरा क्लीयरली लिखाई इट इज बीन रिटर्न भेरी क्लीयरली यू रिड दैम एंड यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड इफ यू डोट अंडरस्टैंड देन प्लीज आस्क मी टुमारो इन नेक्स्ट क्लास यू कैन अल्सो आस्क मी ओके श्रद्धाजलि इज इट क्लीयर Yes, sir. Uh, you can also drop your question in the chat box. I am now looking at this thing. I can have questions from your chat box also. You see here it is um, very clearly mentioned. What is the status of a Baltudar? As pointed out earlier, the status of Baltudar in the rural society of Deccan was higher in comparison to its counterpart in North India. Acha, in North India, what was the name of the uh, counterpart of the Baltudar? Just now I discussed. What was the name? What was the term that has been used for the servants of villages in North India? As it is Baludar in rural society in Deccan, Baludar were servants. Okay, then what was the name that uh, the counterpart of the Baludar that is in North India? I told now just now. Yes, Kamin. Kamin, Kamin, correct, uh, right. Kamin. Ah, thank you very much. Kamin, Kamin. Ah, despite belonging to low caste, a large number of them participate in the. Participated in the decision-making process of the village. Uh, it is the status. What is the one must understand? If Baludar were the servants of the village, then what their servant must be their status must be low. Their grade must be low. Actually, their grade and status was not that high. But sometimes they also used to enjoy some sort of high status as well as high rank in the village, and they were also uh, taking part in the process of decision-making. Uh, concerning some problem of village, for example, and there were documents in the 9th, 13th century to 18th century, which refers to Baludar attending Goth Sabha and endorsing the decision by their professional symbols. Now, Baludar attending the village Sabha, Goth Sabha, and Gaon Sabha, and they were endorsing their decision by um, giving the symbol. And very interestingly, it has been mentioned the potter symbol being the wheel. पटर रिम्बल थी हुईल एवं दि सिंबल ऑफ़ दि बार्बर एंड दि सिंबल ऑफ़ दि बार्बर इट इज मीर सो वेरी इट इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टू रीड यू रीड देम एंड इफ यू डोंट इफ यू फाइंड डिफिकल्ट देन वी शेल डिस्कस नेक्स्ट क्लास ओके वी हैव मेनी थिंग्स वी हैव मेनी एनफ टाइम टू डिस्कस इवन इफ योर क्लासेस आर ओवर वी कैन ऑल्सो हैव टॉक ओवर दि ऑनलाइन टॉक और Even in the phone call, we can you can ask me question. We can discuss. You read them. Very interesting thing. It will be interest to interesting to learn and to read. Read and learn. Uh, next, anybody else? Please put your question in chat box. Uh, sir, more doubts there. Unit fifteen, sir. Temple and its role. Temple and its role. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, yes. I had told you yesterday that uh, if you have doubt, then you can also ask me. Correct? Okay. The role of temples in early medieval period. Discuss temple and its role. Okay. Uh, if I remember, I have um, I have just uh, tried to discuss certain points on this issue, on this topic. 
and uh, if you want then i can go ahead with the discussion i shall discuss definitely now you tell me uh, exact what sort of doubt you have um, who is asking sir uh, sarmila what sort of doubt exact doubt do you just ask me असर माने टेंपल कोन को प्रकार लोक मानन को माने विभिन्न कार्य रे सहायता करथिला ने टेंपल रे कार्य करथिला से समय रे माने लोक मानन को जीवन रे तार भूमिका कोन थिले सर माने किछु बुझियो नै फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल फॉर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग ए कम्युनिटी लाइफ फॉर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग ए कम्युनिटी अंडर वन आइडेंटिटी टेंपल वाज नो डाउट very um, a, a temple had a very great role the community ko gote um, identity purichay ro sahit ekathi kariya pe gote temple le bahut bada role thila ta pare dutiya katha thila temple ko jo mane dano dau thile donors rich donors jo mane dano dau thile ebang jo mane temple pai nirman kam karthule ba temple tiyari karthule semanan ko pai madhye temple gote purichay ro symbol thila जे टेंपल टा के करछि एटा हमरो जजाति के सरी करछन्ति एवं राजा मानन को पाई मध्ये पॉलिटिकल मास्टर मानन को पाई मध्ये टेंपल गोटे आइडेंटिटी रो चिन्ह थिला गोटे जे साइन ऑफ आइडेंटिटी फॉर एग्जांपल व्हेन चोडंग गदेव केम टू इंडिया केम टू ओडिसा ही वाज अ सैव बट व्हेन ही केम टू ओडिसा ही जस्ट रिमार्क एक्सपीरियंस there is a web of vaishnavism in odisha so he started constructing a big temple for the lord vishnu in the name of lord jagannath so in this way for political rulers for political um, uh, benefits uh, temples were being also used or as a symbol of identity as a symbol of um, uh, the as a symbol of uh, patronage we can say temples were also used now i must tell you just one thing if you go through your um, material uh, learning material your this unit uh, this is unit 16 na 15 sir 15 ha huh? if you go this unit 15 you will find a very good thing this social um, identity emerged around temple good social identity bartan uh, for example social identity of odias emerged around which temple jagannath temple similarly in those time social identities emerged around the temples as people and god lived together i am just reading out the um, person from the book you go through you will find very interesting to note it gifts by king landed elites merchants and others to brahmanas and temples increase the spiritual stature of the donor as i told you donor manager spiritual stature ko khali bado bado thala inscriptions are contracts and advertisement raja mane jo don donation do thile inscription lekhu thile ebang se these inscription were nothing but the advertisement and they were just like contract and through this inscription the kings were actually exercising their power political power their political um symbol their political identity their political supremacy so in this way temples provided a great opportunity and platform for the royalty for the royal power as well as common people for common people it was a religious identity and social identity for royal power it was a political supremacy and also some sort of dominance over these people whom, uh, who were united under the identity of a particular religion or particular temple so second thing this is the first thing identity second thing temples were also the center for learning in those time it, it, it was temples were being organized as well as temples were the activities of the temples were carried on by the brahmins and the brahmins were the traditional um, teachers they were the traditional learners so in this way temples the brahmins while they in their leisure they conducted certain work concerning teaching and the process and accelerating the process of learning in the temple premises so temples became 
some sort of um, a center of learning. So in this way, temple had a great role in those times. And um, we can say the temple furnished some important role in the early medieval period um, for establishing the identity, spiritual identity of the people, then also helping the rulers to exercise their political identity. Okay, Sarmila? Yes, sir. Also in social sphere, in cultural sphere, they performed great role by providing avenues for the spread of learning as well as for giving some sort of religious and spiritual solace to the people. Okay. Okay. okay you just read them and you just okay. you just read them and while you are reading actually I, I, I must tell you what you do, what you should do. While you are reading, you just point down, note down the points, main main points. You just note down point wise. One number one point for temple identity, political identity. Number two, social identity. Number three, the um, cultural um, role in the cultural era, cultural identity. All these things, if you write down one by one, then I think it will be very easy for you to understand, also to remember. And when there will be examination, it will be very easy for you to recall and to reproduce on the answer script. Okay. Okay, sir. Next, next, uh, Sarmila. Okay, next. Chat box. You may also put your question in the chat box. This uh, blog that I'm under, I'm, uh, I am under, I have taken for discussion today, having three units only. These three units are, as I have already told you at the outset of my class, these three units are very much informative, very interesting. And if you go on reading them, go through them, you will find some interesting things to know from interesting information you will gain. And I hope you will read them clearly and very mindfully, uh, very mindfully and note down the points. And if you don't understand or find any difficulty, then you may also uh, raise it uh, in the next class as Sarmila raised this yesterday's um, topic was that temple and its role. Sarmila raised it today soon, then nothing harm. You can raise it, uh, your questions any time we are there. We have study material with us. We can discuss this a counseling class. And I hope I can extend my help and support to for you to you so that you can clarify your doubt and you can go ahead with your study with your learning process and therefore i invite uh, your uh, cooperation by by the way in which you are um, putting your questions or your doubts before me so that will be a cooperation so that i can initiate some discussion from my own how much discussion i can do discussion you can also initiate some discussion and you can also, not only question, you can also uh, give some ideas. Achha, yeah, um, that, um, uh, yes, Rakesh, Rakesh is not present today, Rakesh. Okay. So uh, if you don't have any question, uh, I hope I must uh, wind up today's session. Sir, one question. Yes. Sir, uh, can you tell about clearly what is weight vega, forced labor? They are beggars or they are just a forced labor with means what? what, means what, what they... uh, uh, I'm just going to explain. First of all, I must tell you uh, whatever I have told till now. Is it unclear? You just told me, sir, tell me clearly. Uh, so it, uh, it means that what I'm No, sir, no, sir. Not, <laughs> not that uh, I'm not mean by that, but here it is written a bigger word. Who sits no, no, before the temple and all? Yes, yes. Betty, that is mm -hmm. called 
Betty Vegari. Betty Vegari means not, this is not beggar. Beggar is an English term. And beggar is, is not an English term. This is a term, probably it is a beggary, it is a Persian or Arabic term. It is not a non Indian term, I must tell you. I am not clear exactly. It is a Persian Arabic term, probably, Betty Begari. Betty Begari means, well, in this time, this medieval period, there were huge, um, huge scale of temple construction activities, temple forts were being constructed, and the people were forced to work. Forced. This Betty Begari is called forced labor. Forced labor. Forced labor means Jabardasti Kabaguru Kama de Karajibo. Abong Taku Tabai ways Mother Tigari the Ajwani. Ways Mane Dharma. Kebolo Kai Piki Kamasaman Kariwe. But Konasi Paris Remiko Mother the Ajwani. Kebolo, Tankoro, Kadya Pero, Dianora Kajibo, Sarkar Godwara Ba, Konosi Sakti Ba Konosi Agency G eight of the Arikoji, Sidangar Kadero, Pero Dhanaraki, Konos Pragar Parmission of Deki Bina Paris Remikore, you come. Jabordasti Korajai, Taku Veti Veg Betty Begari Kwaja. And this is not beggary in the age English we see beggary, that is a Bikomagiva, that is not beggary. It is Betty Begari. It means forced labor. You may not done forced labor. F O R C E D forced labor. L O B O U R labor. <coughs> okay. Sir. Yes. Sir, Betty Begari Kripto the Sujimidi Betty Begari is a type of key. Actually, Krita da Suje kinai gravela sab din pay. Says Maliko chadi jai periyoni. Ye kamu sari galla par angko chadu thile. Emmane says you may call. They were slave for a certain time. You may call. Okay. Ha. They were slave for certain time. Ame koi periya kichhe samay thele mane Krita da Suje gravu thile. Kintu kinai apne to paisa dao periyona Krita da Suje kono kinai apne paisa dao periyo. Kintu angko paisa bhi diya unudla. Angko sathi mein koi jai. Forced labor, Betty Begari. Yes, sir. Okay. So, Anjali, is it clear? Yes, sir. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> huh? Okay. Um, I've just told it in a lighter van. Don't take it seriously. So, sometimes we must also take uh, things in a lighter way. Otherwise, if serious thing will happen, then uh, it will not be, charm will not be there in the process of learning. And there must be cooperation and interaction. Anyway, if you have any doubts and questions, you may also ask me next class. I'll be with you in the next um, class with uh, unit uh, uh, block six. And it is having Five units. This is a very big block, but a big block with very small things, um, um, very limited. Sir. Okay. Yes. Sir. Um, yeah. Sir, uh, yeah. Page. Um... Oh, you ask me. I am hearing you. I am listening to you. Fourteen century. Uh, what do you want, Rina? You are asking me some question. You may put your question. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, why did migration in the 14th century influence the influence the rural society? For uh, sir, for not understanding. Actually, your question, jo hai, may be thick se samajh nahi paya. आप मेरे को थोड़ा सा ठीक से क्वेश्चन अगर समझा देंगे तो मैं भी उत्तर समझा समझा दूंगा um, आप क्या पूछना चाहते हैं 14th सेंचुरी में क्या हुआ सर पेज नंबर 49 क्वेश्चन नंबर 5 पेज नंबर 49 क्वेश्चन नंबर 5 क्वेश्चन यू जस्ट आउट द क्वेश्चन हम रीड आउट द क्वेश्चन हाउ डिड माइग्रेशन इन द 14th century influenced the royal society. How did it? Migration? Yes, sir. First, I must be near to it. Migration? Just wait. Uh, let me verify the question. Uh, 
sir if you are present uh, please uh, again um, present the uh, study material on the screen uh, uh, that is the uh, unit unit uh, 18 yes sir unit 18 unit 18 unit 18 it may be in the page number 158 like that ha ah, okay you need to read page number you tell page number page number 49 sir 49 49 in yes, 18 page number 49 page number 49 question 5 sir Oh, how did migration in the in the 14th century influence uh, the rural society? Yes, sir. Just a minute. Uh, please bring it to the um, uh, front page of the 18 from um, first page of the uh, unit 18. first page of the unit 18 dr sapthis first page of the unit 18 बेटा तो हमें प्रथम फर्स्ट फेज मैंने दैट इज रूल 18 यूनिट 18 फ्रंट फेज इट इज यूनिट 1 टिके ऊपर को तो सही था मुझे कुछ ना कुछ
ियलिटीजेस Several villages with growing population and economic prosperity developed into town and urban centers. For instance, in the Tamil region, several temples towns like Chidambaram and Kanchipuram were originally large agrarian settlements. All these factors, social organization, size, population, occupation, contributed towards the multiple nature of rural societies. However, difference differences. Despite differences in the rural societies of each villages, a common pattern that began to emerge and we know that uh, during this 14th century there were large scale um, development in agriculture and also we know that uh, during uh, 15th century 16th century there were um, 15 to 17th century there were in the maharashtra region um, marathas maratha leaders they were trying to expand their agricultural field so they were also in requirement of large scale human power and, and as such they used to bring people from outside and all these things uh, prompted for a large scale migration and this migration helped for development of agriculture as well as improvement in the economic aspect of life in the uh, life of the then period say somewhere of economic ba arthanaitik pragati re e migration sahajya karthila so you study you read this introduction person as well as let me tell you yes sir <coughs> just a minute uh, you read this introduction person as well as um rural society and institution uh, 18.5.1 and uh, rural society dekan 18.3 all these things the uh, three uh, parts three parts of the unit a uh, combinedly they give the answer to your question number 5 How did migration help uh, in this 14th century? How did migration in the 14th century helped? Ah, uh, yeah, you you are asking me something. Yes, who was asking me something? Thank you, sir. Your question was, Rina. Your question was, how did migration in the 14th century influence the rural society? So you read the um, you read uh, this introduction person, as well as as I told you, the 18.2, the rural society in the Deccan. Your answer is lying there, and I also enumerated a bit. You go through. You go through. If you don't get it, then tomorrow again I shall clarify. I shall give you the exact location of the. Text. Any question? Any more? Any more? So let's wind up for today. Let's wind up for today. Okay. Thank you. Good. Good. Good night, everybody. Good night, sir. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir.